This will be part 3B. In 3A I was using a detector and it's this little breadboarded thing I put together. In this part I'll be using this as a detector. I purchased this from China. Total cost was 10 bucks. In and out is not marked but I determined if anybody ever gets one of these, this is not a symmetrical circuit board. This little L-shaped trace is pointing at the input. I haven't determined a schematic because it's got this clear shrink wrap over it. I'll take it out at some point and uh, see if I can make a schematic. Looking at the oscilloscope, you can see this is the burst of energy containing the sweep. The sweep starts here and goes to there. That is the frequency, the RF frequency under the envelope is increasing every time. Starts at some low number, goes to some high number. This is the demodulated output from the detector. Now, if this were a perfect sweep generator, this would be perfectly square, and this would be perfectly square. I'm going to get rid of this trace. And I'm just displaying the demodulated output. So what might the frequency be, say, here? What might the frequency be here? or here, or here. It's different. It's always lower here than it is here. Supposedly this is centered at 10.7 megahertz. In order to completely describe what we need to do here, I've drawn this little drawing. Right now we don't have this. And we don't have a device under test. Right now the sweep generator, or the sweep source, is going into the AM detector and the output from the detector is going to the oscilloscope. In order to make this whole system work, we need a second oscillator. A marker oscillator or a marker source. This could be a crystal oscillator, or it could be a manually varied oscillator. Under normal operation, both of these signals appear into the AM detector. Let's say that we're operating the sweep generator at a nominal 10 megahertz, and the marker oscillator is at 10 megahertz. This also acts as a mixer. So at the output, we get a detected modulation envelope from here and we also get at some point in the detector the sum of these two oscillators or two frequency sources and the difference let's assume that this is 10 megahertz nominal sweeping say from 9 to 11 and this is 10 megahertz The output will consist of a 20 megahertz nominal sweeping from 19 to 21. That's the sum of these two. It will also produce the difference between these two. So as these two, well, as this generator source output frequency, remember it's sweeping, as it approaches and as it exceeds the marker source. It's coming up to it and going past it. It will produce for a very brief period of time an audio tone that starts off high, actually goes to zero hertz, and starts going high again. Let me introduce a marker source 
and we'll watch it on the oscilloscope. Here's the oscilloscope trace centered on this line. That is three divisions and a half over here, three divisions and a half over here. This is a 10.7 megahertz marker. Actually, it's coming from my QRP Labs sine wave generator. And I have the generator set in one tenth megahertz steps or 100 kilohertz. I've decreased it to 10.6. 10.5, 10.3, 10.2. So the sweep generator is a little bit off. I'll decrease the frequency some more. And I'm down to 8.9 megahertz right there. I'll now increase it and I'm 11.4 megahertz there. Apparently at some point the marker, there's not enough energy between the marker and the sweep generator signal for it, the sweep for the marker to be seen clearly. Let's go back to the center, which is at 10.2. I'll stop it, and I'll try to expand it. So this is a magnified view of the marker as it approaches the marker frequency, 10.2. starts to produce a high frequency audio signal that gets lower and lower and lower. Finally, it's near zero and it begins increasing. See how the spacing between the peaks and valleys are wider in the middle and narrower. I'll go back and look at the whole thing again. There's the whole thing. We now have a way of telling go back and run. We now have a way of telling where we are frequency wise in this demodulated envelope. I've redone this rat's nest. This is this sweep signal coming out here going into these connectors hooks these things so I could put a device under test in here goes out here and goes into the detector this is from the marker generator this is going to the oscilloscope I have these band pass 10.7 megahertz filters that are used in the IF of an FM radio. Now these are not tunable. I've inserted the device to be tested which is this 10.7 megahertz bandpass filter. Now here's the uh, detector output with the little filter in place. This is the center marker which is 10.7. I'm going to go to 10.8. See the marker moved out to here. And 10.9. I'll step it back, 
10.7, 10 10.6, 10.5, 10.4 it's gone. 5 is on this vertical slope, 9 is on this vertical slope. Now I'm sure that the impedance of my test circuit does not match the impedance that the filter was designed to operate in. So that I probably distorted this curve by, by placing the filter under test. If this kind of bandpass filter had been inserted in a, a couple stages of amplification and I inputted the signal before the amplifier and I detected it after, probably get a much more correct looking curve. Because this WR50 A, B, or C was designed for AM and FM radio or receiver work, it uses these two sweep frequencies which are typical IF frequencies or intermediate frequencies in the radios. 455 kilohertz in AM radios, 10.7 megahertz in FM radios. Typically instead of just testing a device like this, it would test an amplification package of one well, at least two, maybe three, up to five tuned circuits. And the intention of using the sweep generator and marker generators would be to make sure that band pass was wide enough to pass the AM or FM signal. Now, I've elected to use a manually variable marker generator. RCA, the designer of this, elected to use a crystal at 455 or 10.7 MHz. So with a fixed marker generator, you only got, well, one marker. With a variable marker generator, you can get variable markers up and down the band here. So you can actually tell how wide or what the response is of the device or the amplifier under test. A much more useful sweep generator setup would consist of a sweep oscillator variable in frequency and a marker oscillator also variable in frequency. This happens to be an ICO but were, about half the sweep generator marker devices were actually paired together like this. Now we can adjust the marker size uh, select a fine selection of marker range we can center it in the oscilloscope uh, window. We can vary the sweep width, uh, the, var the width of the variations. And we have fine and coarse amplitude output. We also have a crystal oscillator and provisions for an external marker to be input. Or maybe this is an output. I don't know. I've never, I never owned this model. There are one, two, three, four, five ranges. And here's a range switch with five ranges. So th this marker is a range and a center frequency. The sweep width is varied about the center frequency. And the bandwidth, the, the band selected for the marker is automatically switched with the band 
selected for the sweep generator. So the only problem with this generator is its tube, which is not really a bad thing. And these lousy RF connectors. Very popular in the 50s and 60s. I think this actually goes from 3 megahertz to 216 megahertz. And these were very common in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Well, thanks for viewing.